Hi, Year 7, Mr. Tapley here for your next lesson of Year 7 Humanities. Uh, this lesson, we are starting at the beginning. We're developing our understanding of the first major civilizations in ancient Greece, the Minoans and the Mycenaeans. I will say that I am going to mispronounce that word every single time. <laughs> I also uh, misspelled that word every single time. So every time you see that word in the slides, feel bad for Mr. Tapley because he probably had to spell it out three times. <laughs> but if you remember back to our timeline in previous lessons, there were different stages, different levels, different eras or ages in ancient Greece history. And the very first one, the first major civilization were the Minoans and then the Mycenaeans. So that's what we're looking at today, working our way down that timeline. Success criteria is to outline the rise and the fall of these two civilizations. So what caused them to be so great and then what caused them to die, to fail. And we're also looking at another historical skill besides primary source analysis. It's important to be able to tell whether those sources are reliable and accurate. So we're reflecting on the reliability and accuracy of historical sources in this lesson. I'm going to be showing you something uh, a bit controversial from the Mycenaean civilization and you have to determine is it reliable, is it accurate, did it really exist in world history. So the first major civilization in ancient Greece didn't actually form on the mainland of Greece. It was the Minoan civilization and they originated on the island of Crete which is the largest island in the Greek archipelago. Archip archipelago <laughs> is another hard to pronounce word um, and what that word means is a lot of islands. So you can see in this map down here, this is the main island of Greece, this green part here. And then you've got other islands all scattered throughout the Mediterranean Sea. Crete is this one right here. So basically, the first Minoans were actually formed on this island here. And these people were called Minoans after their legendary leader, King Minos. The Minoan civilization uh, was very influential on future uh, ancient Greek periods of history. They had a lot of technological achievements, uh, good contributions to history, but also contributions to Greek culture, Greek mythology, religion. You may have heard of the very famous story, the Minotaur and the Labyrinth, which tells the story of a half bull, half man creature or monster who is locked away in an impossible maze and then defeated by the ancient Greek hero, Odysseus. The Minoans were a peaceful people who developed new technologies, so bronze tools and weapons, beautiful artwork, and built elaborate palaces, such as the Palace of Knossos, which is one of the ancient wonders of the world. I will say that when people usually see that, like, ooh, they developed bronze tools, way to go, you guys are super impressive. That was impressive. <laughs> you have to remember when this was happening. This was happening thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago. These were one of the first people to develop bronze. If you have something that no one else has, you're going to be the best people in that era of history. You're going to be the best major civilization. So the fact that they could build stronger weapons, stronger tools, meant that they could build stronger buildings, and it meant that no one was going to pick a fight with them. So that's why the Minoans were the best in town. The Minoans were also successful because of their location, so because of the geography of where they were. Crete is in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea, which is right next to... Italy. You've got Europe up there. You've got Turkey. If you look at our little world map, it's right above Northern Africa as well, where Egypt is, another big civilization in world history. So because of their location, that allowed the Minoans to trade with other peoples. So they're kind of located in the middle of the shopping center. So everyone who wants to buy and sell things has to come through the Minoan civilization. And that meant that they were getting lots of money, so it led to great wealth, so they could afford to buy things, to build things, to sell things, and to travel around telling people how amazing the Minoans were. It also created a very unique culture that would influence future civilizations. Because similar to the ancient Australians who traveled around the country and took bits and bobs from every other indigenous tribe, the Minoans developed their culture by going around this sea, going to the different places they traded with, and saying, oh, I like that, I'm gonna put that in my culture. <laughs> I'm gonna take part of that and this, and I'm going to give you this and this. So that's what led them to be the best in town, the best in ancient Greek history at that point. Minoan civilization was highly advanced for their historical age. Again, because of their tools, they could build complex buildings. They had engineering skills, so they could move water from point A to point B, which again, doesn't sound impressive, but if I put you out in the middle of a deserted island, 
and I said, get water from this part of the island to the other part, 10 kilometers away, you would struggle. <laughs> so this was very impressive for ancient Greek history. They also had social and religious equality. When you start reading about the ancient Greeks, the Romans, the Egyptians, you will discover that men and women had very different lives. Women had many less rights. Even some men had very few rights compared to other men. So it was very unique, very impressive, and probably a good thing, to have equality in an ancient history uh, setting. So, how did this all come to an end? Unfortunately, around 1700 BCE, a series of natural disasters devastated cities and human life. So think back to the bushfires we had in January. Now imagine if that bushfire was followed by a tsunami, and then an earthquake, and then a volcano, and then a meteor hit the earth. <laughs> That's basically what happened to the Minoans. A volcanic eruption on the island of Santorini triggered a massive tsunami. The cities were rebuilt, however they were destroyed again <laughs> by massive earthquakes in 1450 BCE. You don't have to watch it, but there's a quick two minute video. Um, if you guys have ever been to IMAX, which is the big 3D uh, movie theater uh, down in the city, uh, they did a little documentary on the uh, fall of the ancient Minoans. So this is obviously not a video from the time, it's not a primary source, <laughs> but it's a reconstruction of what that volcanic eruption looks like, and it's really cool. It shows you how the volcanic eruption led to the tsunami, which then drowned the cities of ancient Greece. So feel free to watch that if you'd like. But after all these things happened, a neighboring uh, civilization, so someone on mainland Greece, the Mycenaeans, saw what was happening. They said, all right, now's the time to take charge. Now's the time to take advantage of these vulnerable Minoans while they're rebuilding and, you know, dusting themselves off from the volcanic ash. We're going to go in there and we're going to take power. And that's what they did. <laughs> they ended the Minoan age. And now we had the beginning of the Mycenaean age. The Mycenaeans were skilled at naval warfare. So as I mentioned in the previous slide, the Minoans very peaceful. The Mycenaeans had a few more soldiers. And they used their soldiers, their dominance of the seas, to establish very lucrative, so wealthy, money, uh, trading routes. Their people adopted many features from the Minoans, including their bronze making, and which led to improved tools for construction and weapons to improve their society. So again, the Mycenaeans, just like the Minoans, are now located in the middle of the shopping mall, in the middle of the city. So all trade has to come through Mycenae, which means that they're getting lots of money. And because they've adopted or stolen <laughs> or copied, whatever you want to say, um, the bronze making skills of the Minoans, now they are the ones who are building the biggest and the best walls, buildings. They're building the best weapons. So they've improved their society a lot. The power and wealth of this civilization is evident by Mycenaean artifacts found in neighboring regions. So you can find artifacts, primary sources from ancient Greece, all the way in Egypt, all the way in Italy, ancient Mesopotamia. These primary sources, such as gold, ivory, glass, and ceramic goods found in sunken ships near Turkey, can teach us about the culture and history of the Mycenaeans. So connecting it back to primary sources, how do we know about the Mycenaeans? Well, we know that they were super strong and super good at sailing. They had technology for sailing because they sailed all the way from here down to Egypt. We know that they were very wealthy because they could afford to do that. <laughs> and because of all the goods that were found in those sunken ships, like gold, ivory, glass, etc., etc. So they were very impressive, just like the Minoans, but just like the Minoans, they ended. The fall of the Mycenaeans in 1150 led to the Dark Age of history. No information or evidence of life is available to us of this time period. So it's essentially, history went and turned the lights off for like 300 years. <laughs> no one really knows what caused this. The cause of the Mycenaean uh, fall is really unknown at this point. It's unconfirmed. There are theories. People think it might have been civil war. It might have been more natural disasters. Maybe some foreign invaders came in, wrecked the place. Some people have even theorized that it was early climate change. So the climate just changed so dramatically that there were droughts and famine and people all died off. It's a mystery in history, which I love about history, that they still haven't figured out all of history. So you still have time to go find it out yourself. So yes, that ended the Mycenaeans. Now, let's talk about historical accuracy and reliability. Mycenaean culture influenced later periods in ancient Greece. So they're very, very influential 
on archaic Greece, on classical Greece, even all the way up to Alexander the Great, they were t uh, taking stuff, copying stuff, learning from the Mycenaeans. However, what's even more impressive is that several Mycenaean tales, uh, the Iliad and the Odyssey, these legends, these uh, stories of ancient Greece, influenced all of Europe in terms of their art and their literature for the next several thousand years. There are American movies that were made in 2000, 2010 about Mycenaean Greece, which is very impressive. I doubt anyone living at the time thought that that would be happening. <laughs> um, these legends tell the story of how the Mycenaeans captured the city of Troy in the Trojan War. You guys may have heard of the Trojan War. Basically, uh, a Trojan prince, according to these tales, was abducted by a, oh, sorry, abducted a Mycenaean prince, which led to uh, the ancient Greek king, King Agamemnon, to fight for 10 years and attempt to destroy the city. And the way that they fought, uh, where they won that battle, is very creative. I'm not going to give you spoilers, because it will be discussed in the video that we're watching on the next slide. It involved a giant wooden horse, though, I'll say that much. <laughs> anyway, this tale was shared throughout oral history for hundreds of years before it was recorded in actual history. However, is this history or legend? So the existence of the Trojan War and even the city of Troy have yet to be 100% confirmed. Which raises the question, the greatest challenge in using and interpreting primary and secondary sources is historical accuracy and reliability. These things are coming from hundreds, sometimes thousands of years ago. How can we be sure? How can we know that history is actually history? How do we know that this is really what this used to be or what it used to be for? Who owned this or when it came from, etc., etc. Now, what I'd like you to do to kind of reflect upon that last question there. How do we know history is history? Which is now been covered up by my little toolbar. Complete the following activities and questions in your digital notebook. Now this video up here in the top right, which is the same as this video here, I just realized. <laughs> I put the link in there twice just to be sure. Did ancient Troy really exist? So it's a quick four minute video talking about the uh, struggles of archeologists and historians to prove if ancient Troy, if the Trojan War was real or not. So watch that quick video to determine whether or not the Trojan War was fact or fiction. And then answer these questions. Question one, the Iliad and the Odyssey, which are very famous uh, tales, legends, written by an ancient Greek, uh, not a historian, importantly, but a writer. So he was a, a poet and an author, basically. Um, the Iliad and the Odyssey, which recorded the tales of the Trojan War, were written several hundred years after the alleged events. So basically, the Trojan War happened, and it was tale uh, was shared through oral history. So it was told to their children, their grandchildren, their great-grandchildren, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, for hundreds of years. And then one bloke said, I'm going to write this down. <laughs> so how would that impact the accuracy and the reliability of this primary source? So this primary source here, the Iliad and the Odyssey, this book about the Trojan War, the fact that it was written hundreds of years after the actual events, do you think that could impact the accuracy and reliability of the primary source? Question two. What evidence was found by archaeologists that supported the claim that Troy was a historical city in Mycenaean Greece? So there are some people who agree that it was a city, some people disagree. What evidence is discussed in this video found by archaeologists that supports the claim that Troy was a historical, a real city in Mycenaean Greece? Question three. This one's more of a, well, it's half opinion, half fact. <laughs> half uh, fact is do all, after watching the video, do all historians and archaeologists agree that Troy actually existed? So is there an agreement that historians and archaeologists believe Troy was a real place to some extent? Yes or no? Then the final half of that question is your opinion. Do you agree? Do you believe that Troy was a real place? Now, there are some people who have said that Troy was a real place, but the Trojan War didn't actually occur or didn't occur to the extent that these legends, these tales tell it. But that's what question three is asking you. Do all historians and archaeologists agree that Troy exists? And then your personal opinion, do you? So that's why you have to smash out this lesson, guys. Putting all this into your digital notebook, of course. Um, if you have any questions, if you're having trouble with that video, uh, please let me know. Otherwise, best of luck. Hope you're well. And cheers.